<clears throat> okay, so uh, I want to uh, uh, give you uh, a uh, up to the presentation today. Uh, I prepared this presentation uh, yesterday, and uh, um, I want to talk about the uh, uh, several cybernetics in terms of uh, uh, the lessons we learned from the past and what we failed at. And there are things we are uh, successful, but there are things, the uh, major things that we uh, were not successful. So um, I think what we failed um, is uh, mathematization of this field. We tried, but we were not successful. And I think uh, that's a case to be made. We can debate uh, about it, uh, but uh, I want to put, the, uh, put it out there. And uh, I think the key in the failure is the in the process of abstraction from concrete nuts and bolts of engineering um, practice to the next level of uh, uh, ab abstraction, a scientific uh, uh, systematic uh, study or, or theory, theory building. Uh, there's something that uh, big that we missed, and therefore we have a, a, a ton of a, a series and there's no place to go. And so, so let me start with uh, my uh, uh, undergraduate uh, class today. Yeah. I, uh, in, in undergraduate class, I also assign a uh, writing assignment. And the two students wrote about uh, uh, Shannon. And so I start with uh, um, cause this. Shannon is going to provide a mirror for us you know, to see what uh, we missed. And this, this is uh, just in time. Uh, so uh, this student uh, is very uh, motivated, uh, very insightful, very motivated. He, he wrote this essay just for the sake of uh, his classmates. He said, uh, myself and my class never heard about this person. But I think they should. So let me um, um, tell a story. Tell a story of uh, Shannon. And, and his story is very uh, concise. Uh, Shannon uh, graduated from Michigan uh, University and uh, double majored in mathematics and electrical engineering. Yeah. And uh, as an engineering student, as an electrical engineer, he was, he was able to see the inadequacy of trial and error method in circuit design, okay? especially uh, digital circuit design, switching circuit design. And he was able to connect that to formal logic, to Boolean algebra in particular. And uh, his master thesis, as we uh, uh, talked about before, uh, was one of the best master thesis ever and established the um, what they call a symbolic analysis of a relay and a switching circuit. This is uh, in 1937. And that's basically the, uh, the foundation of the digital design, digital circuit, FPGA, and all that digital uh, hardware you know, were, were the result of his uh, mathematical formulation. So that's a extremely, extremely uh, powerful abstraction. Right? And it came uh, not by accident. Shen, as an engineer, he, he, uh, he, he's concerned with uh, uh, transmitting information through a noisy channel. So th that's my concern. Th that's a specific problem in, uh, in, in, the, in the third uh, uh, segment here. Uh, this is directly co uh, quoting, uh, quoting uh, Shannon. <laughs> and, um, and this is uh, uh, about a telephone system or a telegraph system. But then Shannon, this is where uh, the, uh, his uh, mathematical uh, uh, skills and uh, the abstract thinking uh, kicks in. It, I see uh, this can be generalized right, to, uh, to, to represent any communication system. So see, he called this, he used the word a general communications system, a general one. Yeah, you, you have a source, you have a message, message uh, get piggybacked on a, a signal through a transmitter, uh, through a channel with the noise corruption and get received, get uh, decoded, 
that that can can be uh, uh, the uh, telegraph uh, system uh, uh, of the uh, 19th century, early 19th century, or late late 18th century, or your 5G cell phone today. They, they can all be represented by this flow, uh, this uh, flow diagram. In fact, he invented signal flow uh, chart. So that's the power of abstraction, but it has to be done in the right way. Shannon was at the right place at the right time, facing the right problem. And, and that, uh, 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 as I said, the rest of the story. And so there's a one, one student take on Shannon, and this is another one, another student, uh, Hussein Elsaraf. And I told students in class, I said, I cannot do better than you did here. And he did a great job. Uh, uh, the father of information theory. And he, he, he will uh, uh, tell us what makes Shannon Shannon. Yeah. Again, a mathematician and uh, electrical engineer. Yeah. And the way he uh, uh, constructed the, or established information theory, the key to that is encoding, encoding your message and uh, make it uh, uh, transmitted uh, faster and more reliably. And this didn't come out of blue. Shannon during the war uh, worked on the uh, uh, cryptography. Right? The cryptography uh, is to uh, make your message uh, a secret. So enemy uh, could not uh, read it. But in the process, Shannon has a uh, enlightenment. So this uh, by encoding the message, not only uh, the enemy uh, couldn't see it, it actually make it better to transmit. Yeah. So that's that's uh, uh, you know, it didn't come out of blue, yeah. and this uh, 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 mathematization of uh, uh, circuit design is a shining example. Again, uh, this is uh, uh, the, what the previous student talked about. Yeah. We need this kind of mathematization. The mathematician the mathem the mathem the is on the ground that come from a real problem motivated by the engineering need, and for the need of a general generalization, uh, but need of a, a, a theoretical support for uh, a, a body engineering practice, in that case, communication engineering. And uh, uh, the student is very articulate in a, a, a few uh, uh, paragraphs, he was able to, uh, to, to, to tell uh, very clearly what has Shannon done, right? Here, uh, Shannon first uh, established the measure, the measure, a measure of uh, information in terms of bits. And for that, it's not easy, right? He has to use the concept of entropy, uh, and we should define that the average measure of information in a message, right? The student wastes no, no, no words. This is precisely what he needs to put in the essays for uh, people to understand, and, and this is what he did. And for this to happen, Shannon understand that we talked about last time, the key is in uncertainty. How do you measure uncertainty? Back, back then in communication engineering, nobody heard about the uh, probability theory. The Shannon saw, Shannon saw you, you, the only way you can describe that is using uh, uh, the uh, branch of mathematics called the probability theory. Right? And the, the, prob the probability uh, of the uh, message content would determine this, uh, the, the amount of information in it. So you, so you have this first, uh, uh, first definition of H, right? the, uh, the, the, the amount of information uh, in a message, internal bits. <laughs> The bits of the, the, the unit we are still using today, right? So uh, that's the model information, and how far do you transmit it? That's another uh, consideration, right? So bits per second become uh, the rate of uh, uh, transmission or, or the, the source rate. So you have a, a, a information, uh, you have a message coming out of source at a certain rate, right? Bits per second. So next question is. Can you get it passed through a channel? How do we know whether or not it's physically possible for this message to, to go through intact? 
right? So, so for that, he I need to define the channel capacity to measure whether or not the, the channel uh, has enough capacity to let the message go through. And this is defined by another uh, equation that associated with the, with the uh, signal to noise ratio. Right? This is the medium. In a, uh, this is a channel in the middle where you uh, have the noises coming in. Right? And then he established the fundamental rule. By, by this time, it's become uh, uh, obvious that uh, the capacity, channel capacity must be bigger than the uh, source rate. Right? And this is the, is the foundation of uh, information theory. And this makes uh, uh, Shannon father of information theory. Right? And at every uh, uh, place that uh, there's a big statement, uh, the student put a reference in it. That's a really good hybrid. You know? Nobody told him that. He, he has the in instinct. This is a scholar's instinct <laughs> to, uh, uh, to make it right. Okay. And uh, now there's another uh, student that, that uh, we all know, <laughs> Daniel. I take the liberty to take uh, a few uh, paragraphs uh, from uh, Daniel's uh, writing. I hope Daniel doesn't mind. <laughs> I do not. Great, thank you. Uh, this is really good, good writing here. Okay. And um, uh, Daniel wrote about the, the failed mathematization of uh, control theory. Okay. And, uh, um, you know, from the very beginning, uh, Daniel did uh, this study uh, with me in the other class, uh, James was a uh, steam engine. We spent a lot of time uh, uh, discussing it. Daniel spent a lot of time digging out the the uh, uh, the history, the the the, 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 uh, the document from the English library. <laughs> at one time, at one time, he was even thinking about uh, asking his brother to go to a, a different city by by train and to get uh, the source material. And eventually, he sweet talked the uh, librarian into giving him what uh, he needs. So this another uh, uh, trait of uh, 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 scholarly. Uh, uh, activity is you 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 never are satisfied with half baked argument or uh, or, or evidence. You always go to the source. You find everything you you can about what you want to know, and this instinct the instinct just uh, uh, took over. <laughs> I didn't ask him to do this, but he did. Yeah. So so through so the a study of uh, uh, Jim, uh, James Watts, uh, you mentioned uh, it was uh, apparent from the very beginning. There are defects in the speed up, okay. and uh, the def the defect that uh, uh, Daniel uh, described here uh, are twofold. One is uh, when the load changes, uh, the engine uh, speed will uh, settle at a different uh, value, okay. and uh, the other one is more uh, more pronounced. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, give a lot of people a lot of uh, headache. That hunting. The engine speed it will never get uh, to steady uh, value. It's always uh, uh, oscillate around some uh, average value. Okay, so 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 the uh, uh, the engine Jim Watt uh, uh, invented the engine, but he didn't care about like I said last time. He didn't care about the the, the principle behind it or or how do you fix it uh, to uh, uh, to eliminate these two issues. Okay. And uh, and that is uh, uh, true uh, for years and 100 years, 150 years uh, uh, after the invention. Okay. So, so here, uh, he, here we are, we're, we're contrasting this with uh, uh, information theory, right? Control theory with information theory. And we see that uh, um, we are, we're missing a person there who can, who can see through the problem and articulate at abstract level using mathematical tools to help us uh, understand it, to help us uh, improve it. Yeah. And that's, that's what the uh, uh, James uh, uh, Clerk uh, Maxwell was attempting to do using the, um, uh, uh, the differential equations. Uh, this is a paper from 1868, but he couldn't quite get around to do it. Uh, he, he's a mathematician, but unlike Shannon, he was no engineer. 
he, he was no uh, 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 Maxwell, uh, he was no uh, uh, Faraday, right? He needs something to work with. He needs the, uh, the, the, the basic principle, the law of physics, the law of uh, governor, governing to work with, to produce his mathematical description. He has to describe something that he understands. But uh, I, nobody understood the, uh, the working, working principle of uh, steam engine. So, the, 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 so, so what, the, what did it that Maxwell was about to describe? Yeah, uh, go ahead. I was going to say that whilst Maxwell is well known by us as being one of the first theoreticians to really have a go at describing the action of the governor, that his work went almost entirely unknown for a long period of time. So right. we can look back at it now, but it's largely from an academic historical viewpoint. It wasn't relevant in his time. Right, but even, even his famous work in electromagnetism, even Maxwell equation, that was buried for a long time. Nobody paid much attention to it. There were a lot of competing theories and Maxwell was just one of them. And he died in his forties uh, and, and um, he, was, he wasn't famous when he died, right? <laughs> so, so there are a lot of uh, uh, you know looking back, uh, you know we 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 we, we uh, Maxwell was a, a one of the greatest uh, scientists that ever lived. His uh, work in uh, electromagnetism uh, will live forever. Right? But the, just the example on the uh, steam engines just show you how difficult it is for Shannon to do what he did. He was able to combine the engineering side with the mathematical side, with the scientific side. All three together. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll, we'll uh, uh, talk about that uh, a bit later with uh, uh, another uh, scholar's uh, work uh, by the professor from, uh, from Stanford. Uh, this time we're going to dig into it. Yeah. But here I want to, uh, before uh, Daniel left, uh, leaves, uh, let's talk about uh, uh, this. Yeah. And, uh, uh, this is uh, related to Rohr's work on, on robustness. And Daniel here, Daniel, you can explain a bit more what you mean by this, but the, the, if the theory only holds for a model that would, uh, it would design around and fails when uh, put into practice, then it should not be a valid part of control theory. That's very forcefully put. Well, in terms of robustness, I was taking from Charles Rawls himself from the Linear Control Systems textbook he wrote. Mm -hmm. uh, in essence, he was pointing out that you can't design a control system around just a single model because you haven't tested its robustness at all. You need to work it on a number of different plants, assume there are changing conditions and prepare for them to give robustness to your controller. He didn't have a mathematical explanation, but in essence, your controller must be able to put up with changing conditions within a certain range, or it will be very unlikely to be useful in reality. Right. So this goes back to, uh, to what the, uh, he said in, his, in the preface. In the preface, he said uh, he didn't understand uh, how come we can, uh, we, uh, in the theory allow us to make the system uh, infinite fast. What is stopping us? And he said, uh, in graduate school, he found out this was a linear time environment model that, that doesn't really predict what the system is going to do. So that model is, uh, is, uh, is only on paper. It's not real. Right? So if you, did, uh, if you bet, bet all your eggs in, in one basket on that model, and if that model is not uh, truly uh, uh, representing the physical process you're controlling. Then what is good for? What is the uh, uh, the method, uh, control method is good for? And this applied to his uh, uh, criticism of adaptive control, right? <laughs> the, the premise of adaptive control on the uh, uh, model, on the, uh, uh, on the plant. And uh, he criticizes severely that, that they didn't hold in practice. Uh, and therefore, he came to the conclusion that uh, the adaptive control algorithm at that time, at the time of his uh, the, uh, the doctoral dissertation, cannot be used with confidence in practice. Right. So, 
the other thing I, I like about uh, Daniel's work is uh, uh, he he went he found he found he found what he needs. Right for for him to make the document, he cannot just a uh, 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 hand waving it. He has to have a, a supporting evidence. When you say control theory failed, you know, what do you mean? And he used the uh, the Honeywell uh, report uh, from two thousand. That uh, up to until uh, uh, this day, you know the PID uh, feedback uh, uh, control uh, is uh, <laughs> close to 90, 95, 99 percent uh, of all industrial uh, solutions. And uh, and he he come back with this uh, uh, statement that it's ex extraordinary dominance by the arguably oldest formalized branch of control theory PID meaning. Uh, standing in stark contrast to the main branches of control theory, which are uh, work found today. Okay. Let me talk about adaptive control sliding mode, optimal mode, dead beat, and, and so on. A shocking indictment of academic field. And so, so Daniel has to has a, a hard evidence. You know, what do you mean by failure? Well, you look at the industrial control solutions, 99% or 95% of them still are dominated by this 100 years old uh, PID uh, algorithm. And, and uh, in the meanwhile, you have all these fancy terms, adaptive control sliding mode and so on. So, so what, something had to give, right? Whether it's, uh, there's, uh, whether it's uh, practice is faulty or a theory is faulty. And there, I forget the, the, there was a baseball, a famous baseball player had a saying, and if the theory uh, doesn't agree with the practice, it's a theory that has problems. Something to that effect. So uh, the other thing uh, I think what the, uh, nicely put by Daniel here is uh, with so much uh, uh, simplistic uh, PID, uh, uh, Solutions. There's a, a wide open space for better, uh, better controls, theory, better control theory, better control algorithms, and uh, uh, thirty percent of industrial control will give uh, acceptable performance. Thirty percent. What about the other seventy percent? How much energy uh, uh, lost can you uh, um, uh, can you save from it? How much uh, uh, performance improvement can you gain from it? So, so, so on this facts, these are hard facts. These are hard numbers. Uh, he, he stipulates his position. The over mathematization of control theory is at fault. That, that's the issue. Okay. And uh, uh, at the end, he uses uh, 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 rules again. Right. This, this, this area basically uh, uh, pointed out by, by rules, this is at the dead end. And yet, research continues. So that's my take uh, on Daniel's uh, position here. I mean, he, he put uh, forward a strong position. He, uh, like yours, stick his neck out. <laughs> um, well done. Okay. Whether or not you Thank agree you. with it, whether or not you agree with it, you know, this is the, what the scholar, uh, scholar does. You put forward the uh, case as strong as possible you know, to, to the extent of your uh, ability and let the, what they call the chip fall where they may. Okay. So uh, I want to give you my take on this. How come? You know, if uh, we, we fail that uh, mathematicians, you know, uh, how? Yeah. Well, uh, this is a paper I gave you a uh, first week, uh, uh, reading material for the first week on general theory of control theory in Kalman, 1960. And he says he's going to mimic Shannon. This is why we have Shannon in front of uh, today's lecture, a uh, pure theory of control. He's, he's uh, trying to, uh, uh, he, he, he came out very uh, uh, explicit. I'm going to imitate Shannon and give you a, a general theory of control. Shannon give you a general theory of uh, communication. I'm going to give you a general theory of uh, control. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to ask what kind of how much information is needed to achieve a desired type of control. This is really a valid question. Unfortunately, he didn't 
quite get around to answer it. And uh, from this paper on, the linear time invariant model become uh, a, uh, a bedrock for modern control theory. So this question was never really answered. Do we really need linear time invariant model to do our control theory? You can do control theory with that assumption, but does that, function, does that assumption agree with, uh, with practice? Right. Anyway, uh, this this uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, was the foundation of uh, or the beginning of the modern control era. And uh, uh, this is uh, a dominant uh, scholar uh, still today in our field, Alberto Isidori. And we common uh, 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 died in 2017. This was his uh, um, his uh, uh, <clears throat> evaluation of Carmen's work. The common is a scientist who defined our field, okay. and he, he called this uh, uh, this nineteen uh, sixties, and he's talking about this uh, general theory of controls, a big bang in system theory, okay. and all the concept like uh, controllability, observability, optimal control, uh, state estimation, all of them are premised on linear time invariant model. By the way, okay. he said that that's what the foundation. That, that's what, uh, how we get started. And uh, so if he uh, mimic uh, uh, Shannon, let's see uh, a scholar's take on Shannon. And this is uh, uh, the uh, paper uh, digged out by uh, the second uh, uh, undergraduate student, uh, Hussein. Uh, this is a, a, a professor from Stanford uh, this was written very recently, uh, December 22, uh, last year. Okay. And uh, in his view, uh, Shannon didn't just uh, define this field, Shannon invented the future. Without Shannon, we wouldn't have what we have today. It's very hard to imagine somebody else could do what Shannon did in terms of uh, building the foundation for the information age. Okay. And his conclusion was that uh, it takes uh, a scientist, a great uh, a scientist of first degree, engineer of a first degree, and mathematician of first degree, all three together to get it done. And Shannon possessed all of that. Right? So that's <laughs> that's a spoiler spoiler <laughs> alert. Right? So. Um, this is a, a professor from uh, Stanford. This is a, a, a highly regarded scholar. And he he uh, he used uh, uh, languages uh, at different level. <laughs> so he begins uh, his essay with uh, science, mathematics, and engineering. And what each branch does. Okay. And uh, um, and how rarely do we see somebody like uh, Shannon? that possess the first level of uh, uh, skill and knowledge in all three areas. Okay. Again, uh, his work to turn the uh, uh, circuit design, the art of circuit design into a science you know, by, by a mere master's uh, thesis. And his take on the uh, communication, key in communication is the problem of uncertainty. And I wish common realize this, that uh, the key to control theory is also uncertainty. It's what you don't know that's most important in control system design, as opposed to what you know, and as opposed to what you idealize in linear time environment model. So right off bat, we see a common mist, the key of control uh, engineering. Common miss it because Common was never an engineer. He never uh, had boots down on the ground to practice engineering. He had some success in signal processing, in filtering, but that doesn't make him a, a controls engineer. And without uh, knowing the in and outs of control engineering practice, how could you even begin to describe the problem of control, let alone to build the foundation for control theory. So what uh, uh, 
Daniel said previously the failed mathematician. Yeah. The seed for the failure was right there at the beginning. And Shannon, on the other hand, was able to go from uh, the, the physical to the abstract. He, he, he started with his master thesis of uh, circuit design, right? And he went to formal logic to find the tools, tools of Boolean algebra to make it systematic. Right? And, and you, you, you compare it to, to Carmen. Carmen was nowhere near that level of uh, understanding of both engineering and mathematics. Right? Without understanding both sides, this was hopeless from the very beginning. He doesn't have the, uh, the, the, the skill level or the knowledge to build a foundation for a field of engineering practice. This is why the mathematician failed on the control side, but not on the information side. So this contrast between information theory and control theory really put it all to focus. You know, what happened? Why it happened in both fields? So Shannon, uh, the general theory of communication was mimicked by, by Carmen's general theory of uh, control. You know, the, the words are, are almost identical. Right? And, but in, uh, in, in Shannon, uh, he, he, he was also a, a top rated scientist because this is what he did. He found the fundamental law of communication. Right? It's, uh, on the level of uh, physical laws in the nature, and uh, Shannon have to invent new mathematics to describe the law of communication. That's his mathematician, top read the uh, top read mathematician at work. Okay. But most of all, this is the key word, most of all, the bottom line is Shannon was a brilliant engineer. Brilliant in terms of problem solving in engineering practice. And as a result, he laid foundation for years to come. Even today in 5G, and two of us, uh, two, two of our students are working for a company related to 5G rollout. Even in 5G, we see uh, Shadow Shannon. We see that uh, uh, without him, we wouldn't have said 5G today. So if you uh, uh, look for it, the lesson is there, but the damage has been done. This is uh, this is uh, 20, uh, 2017, April. Look at all these, uh, what they call, this is the Hall of Fame uh, uh, names, the scholars you know, uh, to write uh, uh, pieces uh, to commemorate the uh, uh, life of Karma. Right? And I, I, I know many of these, uh, of these names because these, these were the papers we have to read when we, when we were doctoral students. When we were a doctoral student, we had to read these papers, and most of uh, uh, these papers were, were written by uh, mathematicians or by by uh, PhDs uh, with a uh, 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 lot of uh, uh, courses in mathematics. And I, I, myself, I have to take uh, PhD level courses in mathematics department just to understand them. So this uh, uh, Hall of Fame, uh, Isidori, Professor Isidori is one of them, right? but but the uh, I can go on. There's a, a, a tremendous uh, uh, amount of outpouring of um, um, uh, uh, emotion when a common that could come and open the field, and uh, these these scholars uh, have a field to work uh, uh, to work in because of common. So let's come back to this. Let let come back to 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 the uh, common general theory. Of uh, uh, control systems, and uh, and our uh, the, the 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 consensus in the field that Kahneman actually defined this field. Kahneman is a scientist. Kahneman is not just a, a mathematician scientist. Kahneman is a scientist, and Kahneman defined this field. 
Okay. But if if we are talking about science, let's talk about science. Let's talk about the electromagnetism. Okay. It started with Faraday uh, funding how you generate electricity from uh, uh, magnetics. Okay. And the Faraday was a, 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 a one of the best uh, scientists ever lived. Because he didn't uh, just merely do the experiment. He didn't uh, do it uh, by chance. When he found out or that experiment, that electricity generated magnetism, he had to believe, this is belief, almost like uh, uh, faith. He believed that uh, nature is uh, symmetric. Yeah. Magnetic force and electric force they are mutually inducive. That's his belief. And he just didn't, uh, he, he, he didn't just believe it. He put his belief to work. He spent uh, six years, yeah, six years in frustration to, uh, to find the other shoe, to make the other shoe the job. Six years. Yeah. Or said the, uh, the, the or that the experiment was in 1820, 1820, right? And it's probably around five years later, uh, uh, Faraday uh, found out about it. And Faraday spent the, the next six years looking for the other, the other half of the uh, equation or, or, or the, uh, uh, the symmetry. And finally, finally, after six years of uh, uh, endless struggle, he, di he discovered that in this experiment, how you generate electricity from uh, the movement of the uh, 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 magnetic flux. Okay. And that, in that, he discovered the law of nature. He, he discovered the Faraday's law. We call it the Faraday's law. Okay. If he didn't uh, persist, now very few, few people have, have this, uh, 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 both hands on skill and also a uh, belief, a uh, belief in nature, that nature is symmetric. Yeah. So, for that, uh, 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 so Maxwell as a magician has something to work with. He has for this law to work with. To, Max, to Maxwell, his question is how do we uh, describe this uh, mathematically? And Maxwell was able to do it. This experiment uh, was done in 1831. And in 18, 1831, James Clerk Maxwell was born. Okay? And 34 years later, he, he uh, finished his work. 34 years after this experiment, he put his equation together to explain it. And obviously, that's uh, that's how old Maxwell was when he uh, finished his uh, 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 most famous work. Yeah. So, Thirty-four. Okay, so that's Maxwell equation, and uh, this is our uh, explanation of a perfect harmony in nature. That you have electricity, electro uh, 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 magnetism. Uh, electricity and magnetism, they mutually, they're mutually inducive. Right? They're in perfect harmony. And based on Maxwell equation, he predicts the existence of electromagnetic waves. There are no hiccup, no, no problems in nature. Right? If there were, we wouldn't be able to see any, any, any light, any stars. Right? We exist, we live on this planet, we exist in this world because the, per the perfect harmony in nature. Faraday discovered, discovered it, Maxwell described it. Okay. What we're missing is the, the equivalent of Faraday in controls. Because uh, James uh, um, Watt, James Watt uh, made a lot of improvement. Daniel Brown can tell you 
all the improvement he made uh, to the uh, uh, steam engine, uh, double action uh, pistons, uh, what they call the sun moon gear, <laughs> whatever they call it. And at, at the end of uh, uh, his work, he, he, he threw in something extra. Uh, before he put in the, uh, uh, the flatball governor, the engine works fine. You, 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 you have a valve, you open a uh, close manually, you adjust manually, and uh, uh, that will determine the engine speed. Yeah. But if you, if you were uh, to use this uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to do anything, uh, this engine shaft will be attached to uh, a load and that load changes. When that load changes, your engine speed will uh, change with it. And uh, 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 Watt made an adjustment. So why don't I uh, put a lever in here? Okay. And, and put a, 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 a flavor govern, a governor, which he heard from his business partner, which uh, uh, got it from uh, another uh, mill. Right, described uh, uh, to uh, Watt in, uh, in, in the letter and Watt, uh, uh, very hands-on, uh, Watt didn't need to see it, Watt recreated it. And so Daniel can, can tell you more details about that process. We spent a lot of time <laughs> digging into it. And Daniel wrote a wonderful uh, uh, paper on it. Right. It's something like this, Daniel. Uh, this just to let you know it's publishable. Uh, if you ever want to publish something, that that's, that story needs to be told. Right? Unfortunately, in all the literatures that uh, Daniel and I saw, the, the story wasn't uh, told correctly or to its full extent. Anyway, uh, so so th that that's what the, uh, got the, our field started. Now, this uh, uh, is known as. Uh, uh, one of the major forces that make the industrial revolution possible. So now we liberate the uh, uh, laborers from uh, heavy labor <laughs> and we replace the human labor with the machine. Okay. But in terms of governing, this is where uh, uh, Trink's uh, book come, uh, uh, come in in 1919. You know, we, we, we can see the governor, but we cannot see the governing. He's talking about the law of governor that is missing. This is 1919. This is 150 years after uh, uh, James Watt's invention. Right. 100 years, uh, uh, 50 years after uh, after uh, after uh, Maxwell's paper. So we still don't understand it. And if you don't understand it, no amount of mathematics um, can help you. Before the mathematicians uh, uh, sit down to explain something, he has to know what he's uh, trying to explain. And what he's trying to explain is the law of governing, as uh, a Trinx put. But that was never made clear. Okay. In this, you, you can see literally James Watt closed the loop. Without this lever, this is an open loop. You, you just adjust a, a steam valve and, and make the whatever the uh, uh, the, 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 the engine speed that you want. It's not hard. You, know, you, you can have a person here watching the speed and the make adjustment manually, easily. Okay? But uh, James Watt wants to make it uh, 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 automatic. Okay? And it, it was not perfect, but it didn't stop uh, uh, industrial revolution, did it? So it's a, it's a defect, but it's a minor defect. Okay? The real defect was the lack of understanding and the, the ensuing, like uh, Daniel put it, waste of time in all these other things. Okay. So that's uh, 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 the paper. And this is what my comments. Okay. So, so in a nutshell, further Maxwell, a perfect team. You have scientists that can uh, give us the law of physics, and you have the, uh, the top-rated uh, mathematicians to put it uh, down in equations. Very successful. But Watt, Maxwell, not so much. Yet Watt was an inventor. He was no scientist. <laughs> you compare him to, to, to Faraday, no. 
not the same uh, type of person. He couldn't give uh, Maxwell something to explain. He, he didn't really care what the, the, uh, the principle behind the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the invention, as long as it worked, as long as he and his partner can sell steam engines, right? it's fine for him. That's so not, not as successful. Right? So again, we come back to this. That uh, uh, even though Maxwell was not successful, but because he was so famous, he was so successful in electrical magnetism, people take his work very seriously. New, uh, not new, uh, uh, winner named his book after Maxwell's uh, governor. And he, he uh, cybernetics is a Greek word for, for governor. So there were not never a uh, reckoning or reflection on the failure of uh, uh, Maxwell to disclose the secret of the scientific principles or, or, or law of nature or law of governing. Yeah, that's what's missing uh, in, in what you mentioned. And that misunderstanding continue to uh, haunt us today. <clears throat> and uh, reverse work and the story of adaptive control but just uh, a manifestation of it, right? just a small part of it, small part of big myths. Right? And uh, what's wrong with this field is uh, we have no place for Roars. Roars spent three years as a system professor. I don't know the uh, circumstances of, uh, of him, uh, him leaving Notre Dame, but the field of control need exactly this kind of scholar who, who, who has the courage to say, what you are doing makes no sense. You missed the boat. The problem is uncertainty, not poor placement with Drew Locus or Ruth Herbers. So uh, when you have uh, a, uh, a few dominant personalities, mathematicians, on the top of on the top of the field, then you snuff out all these dissents. You you drive these people out of your uh, uh, field. Right? You can have peace and quiet, right? but also you're in trouble. Your field is in trouble. If after decades and decades of work, you find had no connection, no connection is made to practice. What's wrong? It turned out what's wrong can be found at the very beginning of this field. You use Faraday, Maxwell, you use Shannon as a mirror, and you see immediately what we're missing. Thank you. <laughs> that's my presentation. And that's a summary of uh, what we have been discussing in the first five weeks of this semester. And and that put us at uh, a um, uh, nice uh, transition point. Okay. So we're going to leave this behind. We're going to uh, uh, investigate uh, what is robust control? Okay. What is loop shaping? What was uh, Roars talking about when he said, you cannot be a uh, design controller based on one model. You have to make your controller robust in the sense that it has to work with a uh, number of variations of this model. Right? You, can, you have to allow the model parameters to vary. You have to allow a model dynamics at high frequency for your methods to have any hope to work in practice. And this is uh, what put the, uh, what Roar put in his book. He defined it as a robust control. And uh, to my knowledge, in early 90s, no textbook has that kind of uh, insight. Okay. Unfortunately, this is again, very unfortunate. The book is out of print, out of sight, and hardly anybody uh, treasure the inside of yours. 
you can see it from uh, Amazon. You can buy the book for less than ten dollars. Yeah, that's how much uh, appreciation Roar got from 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 what the, not ten years from from eighty five to ninety two. The seven years, seven years of separate writing his personal time. Yeah. I feel like uh, to some degree, I I'm the only no, uh, voice now to to uh, to uh, to continue. Roar's uh, opposition to uh, to let people know uh, that we need to pay attention to what Roar said. We need to pay attention to what happened. We do not want to repeat and waste another 60 years. From 1960 to uh, 2020, that's 60 years, right? We don't want to waste another 60 years of use, of time, of efforts. Okay. Thus, I from very beginning of this class, we start with the uh, reflection, re-examination, and possibly we can get to uh, the phase of uh, renewal or reconstruction. This uh, this field of control control theory need to be reconstructed from the very beginning. You can see it from the very beginning. We got it wrong. So what we need to do? Go back to the beginning. Go back to where we started and redo it, and do it right this time. Okay. So that's conclude uh, my presentation to you today. And um, uh, let's take a break, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll have some uh, in-class discussions. Okay. Thank you.